Welcome to IC Optometry Talk. Today we're going to be talking about gonioscopy, which is simply a procedure used to assess the anterior chamber and its anatomical structures. We can assess the angle in a number of ways. The first being anterior chamber OCT, which can be quite expensive, Van Herrick, which is a simple routine test, and the RS shadow test. According to the OOA, there are a number of reasons why we perform gonioscopy. First being whether the patient has open or closed angle closure glaucoma, whether they are suspects before we dilate a patient, if we measure a Van Herrick of less than or equal to two, if there's any suspicion of near vascularization, for example, if a patient's just had a central renal vein occlusion or they have proliferative diabetic retinopathy or any retinal ischemic event, if there's any history or evidence of ocular trauma, and cases where we do expect changes to be in the angle, such as pigmentary dispersion syndrome or pseudoexfoliation syndrome. The way Van Herrick works is by using the slit lamp. Then what we need to do is place the observation system directly straight ahead and the illumination system will be 60 degrees off. The light will shine onto the cornea and also onto the iris. And what we're doing is making a comparison between the width of the light that's on the cornea as close as the limb as possible with that of the chamber. We have the grading system to the side here. You've got grade four, which is a one-to-one -one ratio. So the width of the light on the cornea is one and the width of the chamber angle is also one. Grade three is one to a half. Grade two is one to a quarter. This is when angle closure becomes possible and why we need to perform gonioscopy. Grade one, is when it's likely that the angle is going to close, and grade zero is when it's completely closed. The next test we can perform is the iris shadow test. Again, this is a very simple test that you can do in practice, and all you need to do is place a light, your pen torch parallel to the cornea, and if you see a shadow casting onto the iris, then you know there's a possibility that that angle is narrow. If there's no shadow, then you know it's nice, wide, and open. The reason why we just can't look at the angle directly and we need a gonio lens is because of the concept of total internal reflection. The angle itself is hidden and we need a mirror to actually see it. When we're looking at the structures, what we're looking out for is a number of, a number of structures which we'll discuss. So th this image over here is essentially a cross-section of the anterior segment of the eye. You can see the cornea is most, most anteriorly. Here we've got the iris and then we've got the ciliary body. So the first thing that we're going, to work, we're going to work anterior to posterior, the first one that we have here is the Schwalbe's line, which is usually seen as a white line. Um, when it's pigmented, it's known as the Sampolini's line. And then you've got the trabecular meshwork, which has a pigmented and non-pigmented portion, and that's where our aqueous drains out from. You've also then got your scleral spur, which is seen as a white um, structure in the angle. And finally, you've got the ciliary body, which is nice and heavily pigmented. So let's quick run down on gonioscopy and assessing the anterior chamber angle. Thanks for watching and study smart.